We knew this season would be different, and it truly was. Seniors returned for one final pass. She came back for a fifth year, and she is outstanding. Stars shone brighter with every routine. <laughs> there it is! And she completes the gym slam. She is making history again in college gymnastics. Records were broken every week. That score is the highest score in Missouri school history. And we were in awe of it all. Wow, if that's not a 10 0, I don't know what is. That was as solid as can be. There is no telling what today's storyline will be. The only thing we know for sure is it's time to crown this year's SEC champion. Welcome to Legacy Arena in Birmingham, Alabama for our live coverage of the 2022 SEC Gymnastics Championship. The teams today are competing in two separate sessions based on their national rankings. Session one features Kentucky, Missouri, Arkansas, and Georgia. And then at 8 p.m. Eastern tonight, we'll see Florida, LSU, Alabama, and Auburn. Four hours of live exciting gymnastics today on the SCC Network. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Connor along with my fellow Olympic medalist Kathy Johnson-Clark. We are in for a treat today for many reasons, primarily because six of the top 11 teams in the country are in this conference. And make no mistake, all eight teams are competing for the SEC team title and individual titles. And this format of two sessions four teams each competing on all four events at the same time makes for an intense fast-paced meet it can be nerve-wracking hard on those nerves but it often brings out the best gymnastics now the top ranked team in this session is kentucky and they're led by Raina worley who's had a superb season she finished last year 12th in the ncaa in the all-around but she took it to a new level this year she now ranks eighth on bars seventh on floor plus her all-around rank has jumped her to third in the con country behind only Olympians Jade Carey and Suni Lee. Missouri has also had a transformative season. That is Shannon Welker in his ninth year as the head coach there and they have steadily improved under his leadership. From a rank in the 40s when he arrived to consistently being in the top 15. This season is also the first time Missouri has had an NQS, a national qualifying score, over 197 in program history. They're currently ranked 11. There's a lot of compelling storylines here in Birmingham. For more, let's go down to Sam Petchik. Thanks, Bart. Yeah, Arkansas and Georgia have not hit a complete meet so far this season, so that's a focus for both of them. Arkansas head coach Jordan Weaver told me that the message to the team is to be aggressive and confident. Georgia's head coach Courtney Coupets Carter told me that they spent time redefining what success means to them. And today, that means competing with heart from start to finish. All right, thank you, Sam. We're going to have all of the postseason covered on the ESPN family of networks. We have the regionals on ESPN Plus on March 30th and April 2nd. Then the NCAA semifinals from Fort Worth. It'll be on ESPN2, two sessions there. And then the finals will be on ABC on Saturday, April 16th. A thrilling way to finish an incredible season in NCAA gymnastics competition. That's the trophy that will be handed out at the end of session two tonight. Eight of the best teams in the country will want to win that one. Don't go away. We're back in Birmingham, the final one-touch warm-ups as the athletes get set for this session one. Quick reminder how this format works. Four events will run simultaneously today. Six gymnasts per team will compete on each event, counting just the top five scores towards that team total. And the highest team score after both sessions today, this afternoon, and tonight will be crowned the SEC champions. Now there's four judges in this competition. High and low scores are dropped and the remaining two scores are averaged. Now keep in mind, you can watch every single routine on the ESPN app. Each apparatus has its own channel. Plus you can watch the all around channel 
with every apparatus going at once, in addition to our telecast here on the SCC network. So we are set to go, and in this first rotation, as you can see, Kentucky will open on vault, Missouri will be on the bars, Georgia on the beam, and Arkansas on the floor. They'll all be going at the same time. Jillian Prokaski starts on vault for Kentucky. This is a Yurchenko full, 995 start value. So that is the maximum score based on this level of difficulty. A really nicely clean executed vault, but unfortunately very short of rotation. She had to take that big hop forward. That will be a sizable deduction. Michaela McGee is on beam for Georgia and Madison Hickey on floor for Arkansas. And, and just mounting the bars is Amaya Marshall, right. Missouri. And we just opened with a fall on beam for Florida. A fall is five tenths of a point deduction. Keep in mind, a low score can be dropped for the team total, but a lot of pressure now on the remaining five competitors on beam. Big finish for Missouri on bars. Nice job on the dismount. and Hickey on floor exercise for Arkansas. Hickey, the junior from Sycamore, Illinois. Yeah, I spoke to head coach Jordan Weber of Arkansas, and she said the reason they picked to start on floor was three reasons. It's one of their best events. They got to use the entire floor for open stretch, and they finish on beam at every single away meet. So they've had practice doing that. And Sam, you could see how excited that coaching staff was. Felicia Hano over there, who helps on the floor exercise as well, really hit that final landing on the fight last tumbling pass. Arkansas has not quite put together yet a complete meet, hoping to do it here. They have been winless in the SEC in the regular season. Josie Angini now for Kentucky on ball. And a last minute replacement on this event because she performed so well in training yesterday. Big Yurchenko full. Of course, that was a sizable hop on the landing, but it was a gorgeous vault in the air. Before her, Jillian Prokaski led them off, scored only a 9-6. Judges look for amplitude. They want to see them pop off this table nice and high, flare out after that full twist, just as she did. And, and they're looking for a perfect landing for no deduction. Kentucky currently taught, and they're ninth in the team standings in the NCAA. Vault has been one of their better events consistently, currently ranked ninth there. Anjani, the senior from Tennessee. Amari Celestine, talk about a transformative season for Missouri. She's a big part of that. She has really contributed a great deal just as a freshman. Such a fun freshman to watch, particularly on this event. She has some unusual skills, especially the dismount. She does nice stalder work. It is a skill where you don't put your toes, your feet on the bar to circle around. She will show extreme flexibility in this skill. Nice handstands transition to the high bar. That's a Maloney down to a pack, and she is off. Really off in terms of her swing. She saved it, but it'll be a deduction. Van Leeuwen back up to the high bar. A difficult transition. Now check this dismount out. After the Stalder, Stalder front, oh, high great. pack. That is stellar. It's so <laughs> fun to see a unique original dismount. Good point, Kathy. A lot of times in college gymnastics, you see a lot of the same routines because of those are the ones that are easiest to score well on. Great that she went for something unique. Now, this will be interesting here for Soraya Hawthorne for Georgia on beam because Michaela McGee scored only an 8-9. And as you mentioned, Kathy, you can drop one low score, but that puts a lot of pressure on the five remaining athletes for the gym dogs. This is the reset routine, and all great beam teams know need to know how to handle that kind of pressure. Her acrobatic series is a back handsome layout, step out, a little unsureness on that landing. She lifted the front foot, so it'll be a slight deduction. I love the way she does these leaps. It's a little beat before the split jump. She looked a little tentative because I've seen her do those with much more amplitude. Like Arkansas, Georgia has not yet put together their best meet either. 
hoping to do it here at the SEC Championship. It would be a good time to put it together. So you're currently ranked 22nd in the country, not where you normally see the Georgia Dim Dogs. Just the dismount left. She has a couple little form issues. They'll take slight deductions, but so far, this is a hit routine. Round up one and a half twist right here. Let's see if she can get the landing. Very slight hop, but they are excited to be back on track. Many times that routine after a fall is crucial to the whole team dynamic for the rest of the meet. Moment to go on vault for Kentucky. Isabella Magnelli. Their high score so far over there is Mackenzie Wilson's 9825. This is a pipe front half, 10 0 start value, and it's a big one. Unfortunately, had that hop back, but it was well executed in the air. They have three pike front halves on that team. That's kind of unusual. You see a lot of your Chanko style vaults where they go backward onto the vaulting table. It's the same vault that the top vaulter in the country is performing, the front half. And the judges sit right on the side so they can really see if they finish that front in position to open up big after the half twist. Ariana Patterson will be next for Kentucky, the senior from Plano, Texas. You see her season average. That NQS there stands for National Qualifying Score. It's calculated at their best scores of the year, and that's how they go to the postseason as individuals as well as teams. This can be huge. She can get pop off the table and show a, a really nice position. Didn't quite get that open, laid-out position after the pike half but well done. Sarah Schaefer coming on floor after Maddie Jones got a 9.875. Madison Hickey led them off with a 9.825. Opens with a very nice double pike. Really fought to keep that front foot down on the landing. Comes back with her combination pass, back one and a half the front layout. As important as the tumbling is, so are these leaps. They have to hit the right position in the air, keep legs straight, toes pointed throughout the entire skill. She had for one of those graduate students that took that extra year offered to them because of COVID. A lot of athletes took advantage of that this year, and many will do it again next year as well. Finishes with a double tuck, had to hop forward, which indicates under rotation. So they'll take a deduction from that. So far, Arkansas is scoring pretty well. 9.825 and 9.875 before this. As she was finishing her floor a moment ago, Raina Worley on ball. It's a high score so far for Kentucky over there is Ariana Patterson's 9875. And this is the big vault Kentucky counts on. It's a one and a half twist, 10 0 start value, and she does it. Oh, nice. Superbly well. It is such a good vault. So clean, even from the end. When you can watch a vault at the end and see those legs glued together and perfectly straight throughout. That is money because you are not giving away tenths of a point. She had a slight leg separation on the pre-flight and a little arch down to that landing. So not as, not as great as she often does, but a really good ball. Scores for Kentucky on ball range from a 9-6, which will be dropped. And then the next five highest scores add towards their team total. Worley is consistently in that 9-9, 9-9 plus range. Today, only a 9-8 is what I'm seeing. Hmm. Yeah, they really hit her, so she was a little bit off. She had to work hard to get around to the landing, so she was kind of in an arched position trying to finish the ball.
We expect the scores in general will be a little bit lower in this championship. It's different than the regular season where there are just two judges. Here there are four judges. And when you get to postseason, it appears that the judges use a little bit more scrutiny. And so high and low scores are thrown out and the middle two scores are averaged. Alyssa Sharamata does a single bar release on the high bar. It comes up right here after the blind change, that half turn into a straddle Jaeger, really nice amplitude. The judges sit right on the side so they can tell if those handstands go right to the vertical position. Up Love here. that dismount. <laughs> Front giant into a Rudy or a one and a half twist. Again, we just love to see the different elements. Sharametta, nice job after Holland Patrick and Sienna Schreiber notched 985s for Missouri on that opening event. Victoria Wynn now coming after Emily Shield had a 9-8 and Soraya Hawthorne before her a 9-8-2-5. Victoria does her a no eat right here, a very difficult sequence for her acrobatic series. She tumbles forward and then backward into the back handspring. And you must connect them with no hesitation or break to get credit. Or a wide turn is a much more difficult full turn, which is a requirement on B. Very nice 180 degree split on that jump. We'll talk about the special requirements on beam that they must fulfill. Otherwise, it's a two tenths flat deduction. If they don't fulfill it, she's done well. Hop back on the side aerial to full twist dismount. Let's go down to Sam. Yeah, I just had a chance to speak with Kentucky's head coach, Kim, Tim Garrison, about the vault rotation. He said he thought they were a little tight, but it was a solid rotation for them. He said, obviously, the judging is a little bit tighter. They're going to see things they don't normally see. It's a four-panel judge, and they're excited to head to one of their best events, bars. And Sam, it's one of those things where these athletes must block out the scores. You cannot, you, you need to control what you can control. And that was a good message from head coach. Helen Hu, who is known for her outstanding work on beam, has done well on bars this year, not often in the lineup, though. She has gorgeous work on this event. Very difficult back-to-back -back elements with that Pike Jaeger on the high bar and then the pack salto down to low. But what is exquisite about her work, look how straight her legs are, how pointed her toes are, and how together she keeps them on that double tuck. Beautiful routine, her best of the season. So this is a single bar release. Notice the first perfect handstand going into it. A piked ray is so much more difficult. Knees just glued together, toes pointed throughout. That deserves bonus. Only three times in the lineup this year and on the uneven bars and does a superb job there. Shira Mehta before her had a 9-8, so solid scores for Missouri in that opening rotation on bars. Kennedy Hambrick will be next up on floor for Arkansas. Leah Smith before her a 9-7-5, but all the scores prior were 9-8-2-5 and above, so Arkansas scoring exceptionally well on this opening rotation. Such nice technique on that double back and just perfect control on the landing. She had to tuck the somersault after the front one and a half twist.
and Andy Hambrick, along with Leah Smith, both competing in the all-around here in this competition. They will give all-around all and individual titles at these SEC championships, in addition to team titles at the end of tonight's session. Okay, a strong routine, but a couple little parts of that routine, there will be deductions. The middle pass, she should have been... Let's take a look at the first pass, which was the best of all three, just kicks out of that double back. And her last pass was good. It was a little deep in the landing. Notice how deep her knees bend. That'll be a slight deduction. And the middle pass, she may not get credit for the bonus she needs. We'll keep an eye out on that start value. Well, keep in mind also that there are four events going simultaneously. They all don't take the same amount of time. So typically the vault rotation is done very quickly. And then it's bars. So Kentucky has finished their vault. Missouri has finished their bars. And Helen Hu, an outstanding score for her at 8 9 8 7 5 to cap off that rotation. Georgia has one more bar uh, beam performer. That'll be Rachel Bauman. And there'll be one more performer for Arkansas on the floor. Coming up tonight at 8 Eastern, a champion will be crowned in the second session of the SEC Gymnastics Championship with Florida, LSU, Auburn, and Alabama competing right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. See the score in there, Kennedy Hambrick on floor for Arkansas, a 9-8. So as you can see in the bottom right, those team scores are updated for Missouri, Arkansas, excuse me, Kentucky. Arkansas has one more competitor on floor, Bailey Lovett. Georgia has one more competitor on beam. That's Rachel Bauman after we get the score for Haley De Jong, who performs just before her. Nice. So far, Georgia has done a spectacular job coming back from that opening routine fall. Rachel Bauman waiting for the green flag to go up for her performance. As anchor on beam, she has been excellent in this position. She's a natural beamer. Well, they need a great routine from her now because remember, the leadoff competitor, McGee, an 8-9, so they need a hit routine here if they're gonna have a respectable score after the first of four rotations here. Bailey Lovett doing a nice job for Arkansas. Kennedy Hambrick before her at 9 8. Finishes with a front layout to front full. Lost a little form on that first front layout. Soft knees. Really had to work to get it around, so a slight deduction there. When there's a delay with the scoring, typically it's because the judges do not agree on the start value. And as I'm looking around at the four individual judges, it looked like there is a discrepancy in the start value that they have calculated. Maybe you can help the audience understand that. The base score is a 9-4 if they fulfill the requirements, but there are lots of ways to get to a 10. They must earn 6 tenths of a point bonus, and those are by the skills of value, the Ds and the Es, they add up a tenth of a point for a D, two tenths for an E, and then the connections. And watch the connection that Rachel Bauman is going to make in her acro series. Here it's difficult. Side aerial to a layout. A lot of bonus. And it fill, fulfills the special requirement of the acro series. Oh! oh. Mm. So unfortunately, Georgia will have to count a score of one of the routines with a ball. And this was a huge missed opportunity for Georgia because Rachel Bauman has scored spectacular scores and often in these pressure situations. Yeah, twice this year she scored 9-9-2-5. She is superb on this event. 
you can tell just by the work, that switch side was gorgeous. Hit the 180 split, perfectly straight legs and pointed toes. I have to say, when we were watching the warm-up, Kathy, I mean, this is, the beam is up on a podium. This is a four-foot riser over the floor. And it's a little more uh, it's, intense it's system the championship. But I tell you what, I love seeing her fight for that landing because every single tenth of a point is gonna matter. And just because you fell, doesn't mean you let it go. So she is, yes, you just saw it go way off to the side in the middle of the layout somersault and no way to pull it back on. Well, all the teams will have to rotate through and attempt to compete on the beam today. So a missed opportunity for Georgia. They will have to count a fall. Rachel Bauman's score will wait for that. Haley DeYoung. 9775 before her. Ariana Patterson had an outstanding 9875. The high score for Kentucky in that first rotation. Helen Hu, known for her beam work, one of her career high scores, 9875 on the bars today, Kathy. This was a beauty and packed with difficulty, but the form is what highlights this routine. All right, rotation one is in the books here. Raina Worley and her Kentucky Wildcats will move on to the next rotation. But when we come back, we'll catch up with her and talk about her incredible career. Junior from the University of Kentucky, Raina Worley, you are currently third in the individual all-around standings behind two Olympians. What is your secret to competing so consistently this year? I think really just keeping everything one skill at a time and knowing that I have all the training backing me up. Um, coach wouldn't put me in if he didn't think I was consistent enough or confident in me that I wouldn't be able to handle it. Last year, you made it to NCAAs as an individual. Does that give you extra motivation to be back again with your team this year? It definitely does. Uh, I have a lot of different types of motivation built up this year. Last year, I think I wanted to make it in order to prove to myself that I can go that far. But this year, knowing that I can by myself, I know the team is strong enough to push that far as well. Having them there would be twice as fun and much more of an experience that I would like to have. Last year, your team got fourth place at SECs, proving that you could contend with the teams in the night session. Do you guys talk about that? And is that something that you want to achieve again this year? It definitely is. Um, we actually have had a conversation about it this week to mention that every we're all going to be under the same roof, same judges. So, you know, there's not going to be much variation happening. Knowing that we can score the same in the night session early in the morning definitely gives us a different type of drive. Morena is ranked eighth in the NCAA on bars and seventh on floor this season. It's an outstanding event for Kentucky, their highest ranked event nationally, seventh. And that's where they'll be when we come back. This is a close one as expected. Arkansas has the lead after the first of four rotations. Then it's Missouri, Kentucky, closely behind Georgia with two falls on the beam, trails in four. Don't go away. Coming up next, it's the second game of a big three-game softball series between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Coverage begins at 5.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. I'm Bar Connor, along with Kathy Johnson-Clark and Sam Peshek. We're here at the Legacy Arena in Birmingham, Alabama for the 2022 SEC Gymnastics Championship. What a regular season we had. Now we're flipping the page to postseason, and nobody does it better than the SEC Network and ESPN, as far as I'm concerned, because look at this. You can watch every single routine on the ESPN app. Every apparatus has its own channel, plus you can watch the all-around channel with every apparatus going at once, in addition to our television coverage on the SEC Network. So we have it covered from every angle. You can see every routine of your favorite team. In this rotation, on the vault, it's Arkansas. On the bars, Kentucky, Missouri on the beam, and Georgia on the floor. Emma Kelly, the daughter of Mary Lou Retton, 
First up for Arkansas on the vault. And does a really nice job with her vault. She hasn't been in the lineup much this season, so she delivered exactly what they needed her to. Alyssa Perez Lugonis now for Georgia on the floor, hoping to rebound after an unfortunate first rotation on B. Very few gymnasts perform their routine quite so fully as Alyssa. Last week she had her season high of 9.925. Interesting middle pass, whip half. Oh, oh no, missed the timing. Mm. Completely into the front fall and may have hurt. Oh. She's recovered, just jammed those ankles. Completely regroup, has another double back in this routine. Last pass, right here. Solid landing. Well, unfortunately, that middle pass just took the wind right out of her sails. Such a shame, she's been very consistent as their opener on floor exercise and just brought her head forward in the middle of that whip half and couldn't get the feet down to punch off the floor. So just like on the last event, Georgia on the beam, they started off with a fall and put enormous pressure on the rest of the lineup. Savannah Panisi up second after Emma Kelly led off Arkansas with a 9-7. Same vault here, Yurchenko full, 9-9-5, start oh, value nice. and <laughs> got the landing, I could see Felicia Hano <laughs> down there, super excited. She coaches the vault. Felicia, of course, formerly of UCLA and a standout on that team as a vaulter. Julian Davis led off Kentucky on the bars with a 9-7. You know, all season long, the scores have seemed like they've been out of control, almost too high. It's kind of refreshing here at the SEC Championship to see a little bit more scrutiny, and I think that will help determine the rightful champions, hopefully. Beautiful nice. work so far, just excellent technique, amplitude, good form. Really nice to see Jillian here with her tight legs. Her long lines look beautiful on this event. A little stutter step there on the landing. They'll have to take a deduction there. But nice job in the routine. She had a bit of a twisted ankle back on March 16th, and so I know that's been hurting her a little bit. She's in the all-around today for Kentucky, and this is one of their best events. Leah Smith now for Arkansas. Oh. Nice full and another stuck landing. Arkansas is bringing it so far. How about this? Savannah Panisi before her a 985 and another clean landing for the Razorbacks. There is nothing like a stuck landing. When they when you can take no deduction on the landing, just a huge advantage in competition. Anna McCrary here on balance beam. She had a great warm up, trained well yesterday. I expect her to be confident and calm here. Opens with a front toss, very solid. Tamaya Marshall led them off with a strong 9-8. Macro series here, got handspring layout, step out. Judges are looking for form throughout, if you see Soft knees or flexed feet going over the top. The judges should take a slight deduction. We jump into a double stag. She's a tiny bit tentative. Usually she hits that, that position a little higher up off the beam, but so far this is a really good hit for Missouri. McCurry from the senior from Tennessee has already indicated that she's gonna come back for one more year for Missouri and take that extra COVID year offered all the athletes who were 
missed out on the postseason. Callie Nixon on bars, hitting that final handstand. Watch the height on this dismount. She's going to go above her coach's head. <laughs> well done. That is spectacular. Full twisting double back. First two scores for Kentucky on the bars where Davis is 9-7, Prokaski a 9-7-5. Arkansas doing an outstanding job on ball. Leah Small Smith a 9-8-5, Sarah Schaefer a 9-8-7-5, and that brings up Amanda Ellswick. Their final two vaults are one and a half twists, so 10 0 start value if they can stick. Oh no, did the full here. A bigger fall, so that had more amplitude, a little more distance from the table, and just a slight hop on the landing. Look at the height. Wow. Almost five feet off the table. Nice, tight, laid out form. Looks for the landing. Chest is up high, and it's six feet from the table. Well done. You know, for sports fans out there, five feet over the table, which is four feet in the air. Her hips are nine feet in the air when she's doing that amazing power and technique. Arkansas doing an outstanding job here in the first two rotations. Floor was terrific. They lead after one of four rotations and so far very solid on vault. Kennedy Hambrick will be their final vaulter. She's outstanding here. Hambrick in the all around today. Senior from Pearland, Texas. Ellswick scores in, 9.85. One and a half twist, step on the landing, they'll take that deduction, but this vault is worth a 10-0. So she gets that half a tenth advantage before they deduct for the landing. Arkansas hoping to finally put together their first complete no. meet of the year, and they are on a roll, two events in. Sydney Schaefer now for Missouri on beam. Hannah McCrary before her a 9-7-7-5 after Amaya Marshall led them off with a 9-8. So solid scores. She does a triple series right here. Two back handsprings to a layout step out. Very nice. solid. She looked a teeny bit nervous in the warm up but moving calmly through here, staying aggressive. Those are the those are the qualities you want on beam. Stay calm, but be very aggressive. Attack each skill and last, finish. Last year, she competed at the NCAA championships as an individual. Missouri did not make it as a team. She competed on beam. Twice she scored 9.925 this year. Round off one and a half twist. Needs to find this blind landing. Brought her head forward a little bit, makes it difficult to not over rotate that, so she hopped. But a really, really strong routine for them. You get bonus for connecting these three skills. She stayed right in line. Notice how hands, shoulders, core, you really have to engage your core when you attack that landing and press down into the beam. Talked about Shannon Welker's goal is to be a relevant team in the SEC. They lose no routines for next year and so he's very excited about what they've accomplished this year, the best year in program history and a chance to even improve upon it. We go back to Kentucky on the bars. Callie Nixon had a 9775. Shaylin Luxick, a 9-8. This is Josie Angini. She'll open with a combination that's a giant into a blind turn. She's a little bit short on that handstand. Hit that one beautifully. Straddle Jaeger, just a little flex of the feet. So they'll take a slight deduction for that flaw. Nice, aggressive final handstand. I like that Kentucky swings aggressively and then nice. gorgeous. Double layout, that was a beautiful dismount. So the judges get this view and you can see that that handstand was definitely short, but she nailed the handstand after the blind turn. 
And this dismount is a beauty. Excellent. Back to the beam now for Missouri. Sydney Schaefer had a 9-8. That brings up Alyssa Sharametta. Beautiful beam worker. Love the straight legs and pointed toes that she maintains throughout this routine. Shows off gorgeous flexibility. I love that she keeps that support leg straight in her beam work. Just shows polish on this event. She and Schreiber are really the two MVPs in terms of scoring contributions to the team. Difficult double stab ring jump for that second jump. You see her often on bars and floor. Not as often on beam, but she scored as high as 995, although she struggled a bit last week, only 9275. So solid on that front aerial. Nice full turn of requirement on balance beam. Beautiful chest stand pose to show off flexibility and just beautiful lines. And the chef's kiss of this routine, I have to say, is coming up. The dismount is just wicked cool. It is fun as can be. Oh, a full this. twisting ah, and, she stuck it. <laughs> and she finds the landing. You tell me that doesn't look fun. Oh, I'd like to try that off the side of the swimming pool, wouldn't you? Yeah, you want to go into water. <laughs> she has to land on a hard mat, and she did it beautifully. That was superb. What a treat. Alyssa Sharametta. Moments ago on bars for Kentucky. Raina Worley, their star all around her. Coming after Josie Angeny had their best score of the day so far, a 9825. Chris clean, so aggressive. Look how straight her handstands are and how she attacks these casts. She does not hold back. It just shows the hard work that she has put in to make the most of the code of points and to not give any deductions away. Hits those hands, says, watch the dismount. Full out oh, and yeah. a great landing. Well done. <laughs> Tim Garrison, the head coach there, he said she's one of the heartbeats of the team. She just loves everything about gymnastics and especially to compete. That double back as she delays and twists on the second somersault. That is fun and beautifully executed. All right, two events in the books for Kentucky. Not the big scores that we're used to seeing from them. But there's a little bit of momentum, and they usually get it on bars, don't they? They needed to take advantage of these first two events and make the most of them because they are strong events. Garrison, in his 11th year, has created unprecedented success at Kentucky. Currently ranked ninth as a team in the country. And he says, we're good, but we have more to give. He said, we're in the top 10, and we have fuel in the tank. So they're hoping to execute better. They were third after the first rotation, after subpar scores on Vault. And Helen Hu from Missouri. You see her beam average, 991, will be fifth up to go for this team. Sharametta's score is in. It's a 9-9. Nine, nine. That is well earned, I will say that. And so many gymnastics fans out there excited to see Helen Hu back. She had a torn ACL last year. We have missed these routines. Her beam is truly one of a kind. So unique, showing off the flexibility, the balance. She does great handstand work. Beautiful body control and presentation on this event. The Y turn so difficult, the requirement is to do a full turn. You don't have to do one as difficult as that, and she does it effortlessly. One of the most beautiful oh. front aerials, and oh gosh, she was she needed to connect mm. that. Mm. 
notice how well she can do it. She was just mm. off the first time around and she repeated it because she needed that combination for her acro series. And another front aerial to the front scale, side scale. I mean, this is just gorgeous beam work. She missed all of last season. She was out with an ACL injury. She's been struggling with some back injuries this as well. She was outstanding on bars in that first rotation, scoring a 9-8-7-5, but a missed opportunity for here on her best event, the beam. You're right, and she, she does extreme beam. So this was a routine that could have won here, and unfortunately the fall will preclude that, but it does not mean I am not enjoying this routine to the fullest. It's so beautiful, and she is spectacular on the event. And Soraya Hawthorne opens up with a nice pike double on floor coming after Rachel Bauman got a 9-9. Great comeback for Rachel Bauman there after the fall on beam. So Georgia, they're hoping to replace that low score of 8-9-5 in the leadoff spot. Everything beyond that has been between 9-8 and 9-9 love the symmetry of those leaps and jumps. She really hits the nice shape in the air. The great amplitude. Huge opportunity here for Georgia to get on track again. Remember, they had to count a fall on beam in the first rotation. They need a hit here for Soraya Hawthorne. So far, so good. Just a double tuck here. Needs to land with the chest up high and no movement of the feet. Oh, actually, front layout to Rudy. Split jump. <laughs> Great job. So happy for this team. They will not count a fall on floor exercise. Six oh. times this year, she's gone 9-9 nine, nine or better on floor. Let's go down to Sam. Yeah, Bart. Sienna Scheiber told me when she comes to beam, she likes to have a beam party. Most gymnasts like to step away from their team, not necessarily watch, to get in the zone, not Sienna. Even with Helen Hu's mistake, she is dancing around. She's the first person to cheer for all of her teammates. She likes to keep it light, and you can't tell she has any extra pressure on her right now. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> she is their top-ranked athlete on the team as an MVP team captain. 39.575 is her top all-around score this year. And, and can Coach, I add, she's a 4.0 engineering student oh. on top. She's a leader in many ways. And Coach Welker said she could really go anywhere in the lineup. Some people like to go early or late. She said, put me anywhere, I'm good. Full turn setting up for a triple series here. Back handspring, layout, layout, very difficult. Everything has to stay in line with the beam. And she does it with beautiful oh. form, nice amplitude. How important is this? Remember, Helen Hu fell. She had a 9375. So for Missouri to have five respectable scores here on beam, they need a hit right now from Schreiber, and she's on. Important leap series here, switch half to split jump. Well done. So many gymnasts really cut that switch half off short, and she did it well. Score came in for Soraya Hawthorne on floor. It was a 9-9. Big routine, and great job with it. A huge moment for Missouri. The Tigers needed a hit from their all-around star, and they got it. Sienna Schreiber. <laughs> delivering a big routine here in the second rotation at the SEC Championship. So many people think gymnastics is an individual sport. Well, in NCAA gymnastics, it is all about team. Sam is with Arkansas head coach Jordan Weber. Jordan, you told me that you want to put a complete meet together today. What did you think of the first two events? I mean, I thought they started really strong. I mean, the from the first floor team, the team was lit on fire. Um, we've had a, a couple little things here and there, but most of all, they're just being consistent and they're being aggressive and they're holding their landings, which I'm really proud of. Their energy level is high. What did you tell them before the meet started? I'm like, go out there. We get the advantage of starting on floor where we get to light it up on the first event. That's amazing. And they're really feeding off of that energy from the first event. So hopefully we can keep it going. How do you keep that momentum going for bars? 
celebrating every moment. I mean, every handstand, every stuck dismount. We're just here to enjoy it and show what we can do as a team, and hopefully we can come away with a win in this first session. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you. A lot of highlights in that second rotation. Leah Smith for Arkansas, a solid 9.85 on ball. Arkansas was on fire with these landings. Spectacular work. Sarah Schaefer followed up. 9.875 with a Yurchenko half. And we finally broke into the 9.9s. Nine it was Alyssa Sheremetta with his outstanding routine on beam. Superb. That scored the first 9.9 nine of the day. Superb balance beam work and a super fun dismount. And Sienna Schreiber, a 995. Now the Missouri junior Sienna Schreiber is having a fantastic year. When we come back, Sam sits down with her and talks about their historic season and her leadership role. Sienna Schreiber, junior from Missouri. Your team has had a historic season setting new program records. What's different this year? I think definitely our team chemistry and just like the freshmen coming in and just how we've bonded over the past, like ever since summer they came in, you know, it's just been like a whole different atmosphere. We really planned out our goals and know what we wanted to do. So I think just having those set up and just like knowing what we want to do has really made a difference this season. What is your role as a leader, knowing that there is more underclassmen than upperclassmen? I would like to say I'm a fun leader. I try to like help them with what's going on, make sure that they're okay, making sure like their personal life, their school life, everything is going well, because I know that plays into the gym a lot. Keeping it fun, having things to do outside of practice, just making sure like we're all together on the same page is something big that we've been working on this year and that we all have like, like we said before, like the same goal. Since your team has raised the bar for the regular season, has that elevated your team's goal for the postseason? Definitely have bigger expectations going in. We we had those expectations at the beginning of the season, but like we can really get after them in the postseason. So it's really exciting to see that actually come into play and that we're actually being able to achieve those goals. Missouri has broken their program record for team score twice this season, including last week when they scored a 197-675. What an extraordinary run they're having. Now when we come back for rotation three, the Tigers will head to the floor where they're ranked 10th as a team. Arkansas has the lead. Missouri is one-tenth behind them, followed by Kentucky and Georgia at the halfway point. Don't go away. of SEC Conference Baseball and tomorrow afternoon we'll have the series finale between Texas A&M and the number 13 LSU Tigers from Baton Rouge. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. I'm Bar Connor along with Kathy Johnson-Clark and Sam Peshek here. We're at the halfway point in this competition. Arkansas has been in the lead the whole way so far. They led by .075 with solid scores on floor and continued that in the second rotation with a nice beam rotation as well. So we move once again to the quad box. A reminder that you can watch every single routine on the SCC Network Plus. Each apparatus has its own channel, plus you can watch the all-around channel with every apparatus going at once. So you don't need to miss any routines from your favorite team in this rotation on the vault we have Georgia on the bars Arkansas on the beam we have Kentucky and on the floor it's Missouri and Bar Georgia is on their highest ranked event they need to take advantage of this rotation while Arkansas and Kentucky are on their make or break events they've struggled on these events during season so they need to attack. And so far, great bar routine from Arkansas to lead them off. Strong vault for Georgia. There's Amanda Cashman leading them off there. On the beam here is Shaylin Luxick. Great story with Shaylin Luxick. She came in after Bailey Bunn, one of their top gymnasts, top all-arounders, was out with a knee injury. And assistant coach, 
came to her and says, I am putting you on beam and you're going first. <laughs> and she says, put me in, I got this. All right. And she has delivered. At the same time, it's Sienna Schreiber. She had a 9.95 in that last rotation on beam for Missouri. And she goes from last up on beam to first up on floor. This is a great event for Missouri. They're ranked 10th in the nation. So they can really build here. Missouri had a great year this year, 11 and four, but three and four in the SEC. They did beat Arkansas, Georgia, and LSU. Here's Georgia on the vault, Michaela McGee. One and a half twist, big vault for them, but under mm. rotated, and that will be a sizable deduction. Amanda Cashman led them off with a 9.775. Leah Smith led off Arkansas on bars with a 9.825. That brings up Jensen Scalzo. Freshman in her first SEC championship. Big moment. Nice job on those first two handstand positions. Nice attack on that final handstand to set up the dismount. Oh, Double nine. layout, really pretty technique on that. The hop back will be a slight deduction. Jensen has been becoming such a leader on this bar team, and she's the one that leads the huddle. I overheard her tell her teammates that today they're going to hit all their handstands, stick their landings, and they're going to focus on being calmly aggressive. It worked for her. Thank you, Sam Peshek. Heading back over to vault now. Cashman had a 9.775. We just saw Michaela McGee under rotate her vault, only a 9.65. Abby Ward hoping to get Georgia back on track here. Abby does a Kazumatsu. It's a front entry vault. Full twist on the after flight. Very difficult vault. Hard to show off great amplitude. It is often underappreciated by the judges because they're used to seeing the roundup vaults that really blast off. But does a nice job with this. It should be a little bit higher, a little bit more rotation. Maddie Jones waiting her chance to go on bars for Arkansas. Arkansas has the lead. Missouri in second, just by one-tenth of a point. Coming into this rotation, remember six athletes compete, you count just the best five towards your team total, 9-8 for Scalzo. Good start. And change into a tight Jaeger, more difficult than the straddle Jaeger we've seen. Beautiful amplitude on that pack salto down to low bar. She was a little bit over on that half pirouette on low bar. You really need to show those pirouettes a little short in that last handstand. Those will be minor, but they would definitely be deductions and didn't quite show the stick. It was a deep knee bend and she stepped into her salute, so she gave up a few little tenths of a point. This is the event that has shown some inconsistency this year for Arkansas. This was nice. She was a slightly over on that blind change, but nice form, difficult to really keep those legs straight together and toes pointed on that. And just under rotated, had to do it, go into a deep knee bend and then never showed the salute. Moments ago on beam for Kentucky after Shaylin Luxick led them off with a 9.72. Here's Jillian Prokaski. Oh, and unfortunately, you could see on that back handspring that left arm was bent, so she was already leaning to the side. Yeah, if you notice, each team so far has had at least one fall on beam, and I just want to point out 
for everyone watching, this could be an impact of the podium. Because the surface is raised, it actually makes all the equipment a little more bouncy. Therefore, on balance beam, it really affects the timing of the skills. The gymnasts need to be extra patient and take a little bit longer to absorb the landing. Thank you, Sam. Rachel Bauman now for Georgia on the vault. Prokaski's score was in. It's a 9-2-5. Nice job on that one and a half twist vault. Really good comeback for Rachel. She had that missed opportunity on beam, but came back strong on floor and with this difficult one and a half twist on vault. Good for her. Prior to her, Soraya Hawthorne had a 9-8-2-5. That's the high score for Georgia over there so far. Important routine here now for Kentucky. Remember, they are in third in this competition, and this is Isabel Magnelli. She's beautiful here. Triple series, two layout step outs right there out of the backhand. So just doubted herself for a split second, didn't quite finish aggressively. They're feeling a lot of pressure. Their warm ups were a little off. Mm -hmm. They look nervous, um, several falls. Associate head coach Rachel Garrison is in charge of balance beam. And sometimes it's hard to find that, that perfect thing to say to your athletes in these very high oh, pressure nice. moments. But what a way to finish. Really strong routine for them. But to find the right words to just, because this is a stressful environment and you feel the pressure, well, you have to be able to handle that on beam. And it's pretty rare that they get up on a podium at the championship part of the season. Most of the top meets are on podium. However, during the regular season, they compete down on the regular surface, like over a basketball court. And the podium is, the dynamics are completely different. Absolutely. It's a little wobblier, it's a little higher up, so the visual is a little bit different. Sam how, did, made, how did you adjust? Sam made the point, you really have to take your time and every skill has a setup, follow through, and finish. And you have to be very deliberate on podium because you almost want to still the beam before you take the next step into the next skill. The other thing is the difference in perspective, what you see because it's raised. Sarah Schaefer at a 9.825. Solid scores for Arkansas. Again, here's Kennedy Hambrick. And we saw on senior night when we covered their routine, they had trouble on this event and that was Feeling the nerves, if they can handle them here, they are off continuing to possibly put together their best meet ever. The big dismount, right. full twisting double back, just almost looked like an unnecessary step. She was slightly under rotated and just couldn't quite keep both feet down. She has a little bit of form issues with feet and knees. They may take that cumulative deduction at the end for not quite perfect legs and feet. Important routine here for Kentucky now. Magnelli came in with a 9-7. Here's Ariana Patterson. And she can be spectacular here. The amplitude she shows on her leaps and on this acrobatic series. It's spectacular, but she has been missing. She's been nervous. So I'd be lying if I were to say I'm not a little nervous for her. She's got to attack the landing oh, just yes. like that. Love the amplitude, though. She goes so much higher than most gymnasts on that skill. Front aerial. Well done. And watch these leaps. Switch leap to switch leap. It's a difficult series. And if she really goes big, they're spectacular because of the lift. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> she had a slight balance. I wouldn't even say it wasn't a break. It was a slight adjustment. Switch side again. Amplitude. Shape in the air. Maggie O'Hara mounts the bars now for Arkansas after Kennedy Hammer gets a 9.85. Well, good for her. Step on the landing, but compared to her warm up, I'm just so pleased for this gymnast. If 
she can hit here. All scores for Arkansas on bars will be 9-8 or better. That has been their theme all day long. And Maggie is a specialist. She is heroic on this event <laughs> because she can come up with a big one when they need it. The graduate student, she's a great leader, transferred from Michigan, but superb on the bars. And Arkansas continues to hit consistently and cleanly today. Look, now that's a handstand. Do you see how <laughs> flat her back is? So you can draw a straight line from toes right through the leg, the hips, all the way through the shoulders and hands. And she almost got that stick, but not quite. All year long, they were a bit hot and cold on bars as they get a few notes from Chris Brooks in his third season as the assistant coach there. Brooks, a standout gymnast at Oklahoma and an Olympian himself. He brings a lot of energy to this team. And I'm sure he was frustrated this year because they didn't quite get it together on bars, but looking great here at the SEC Championship when it counts. I want to point out a motion they made with their hands. So they were really high for these events. Now they've got to like bring it down, settle, because beam's coming up. <laughs> A lot of smiles over there for the Razorbacks at 147.55 is their score here after three rotations. The others have yet to complete this rotation. Although Georgia is done, Megan Roberts got there 9.825 at the end of that rotation. So Georgia did well on vault after only one slightly shaky landing. Good, but, uh, solid scores. I love this one-two punch for Kentucky on beam. Josie Angeni here going fifth, and then Raina Worley behind her. Triple series here. Great fight. I love the smile on her face. She fought all the way through that series and nailed it. Anna McCrary had a 9-8-2-5. Jocelyn Moore for Missouri on floor. Ariana Patterson for Kentucky on beam prior to Angini a 9-8. Big double layout ah. <laughs> and held on to that landing. Solid work on beam, side area to a tuck full. Great job. Look at the height on those leaps and jumps on the floor. Look about a one-two punch here. Jocelyn Moore and Amari Celestine. Both freshmen came in this year with a team that Shannon Welker had already created. And they have added a wow factor to the Tigers. Combination oh. pass, front through to a double back. You think she liked that landing? <laughs> it's a solid event for Missouri. Tenth in the country. Nice lift on this double layout and impressive to hold on because she was leaning forward and wanted to take a step. And front through to double back, check this landing out, held it. Tuesday night on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, our SEC Inside grants you an all-access pass to the SEC Gymnastics Championship at 9 Eastern. You'll get never-before-seen footage and sound from gymnasts and coaches. It's a real behind-the-scenes look. That should be fun to watch. Score in now for Josie Angini on beam. It is a 9.85, so... That brings up Raina Worley. Remember, they have to drop that score of a 9-2-5 earlier in the rotation. And extra pressure on their all-around standout here, Worley, for Kentucky to hold it together here on beam. And this is a gymnast where you think, extra pressure, no problem. I got this. Jocelyn Moore score for Missouri in on the floor is a 9-9, and Amari Celestine opens up her routine now. Final two routines in this third rotation. Very solid so far on balance beam. This will be a full twisting double back on floor. Very difficult and well done. A 
last week she had her season high, 9975. Slight arm correction on balance beam, just an extra swing of that left arm. Missouri's been in second place all meet long with a 9875 for a Celestine here. They could take the lead over Arkansas after three rotations. Solid on that front toss on balance beam. Solid routine, little hop on the landing. <laughs> what a How big nice. performance. I mean, she lights up the floor. <laughs> she That's is fun. so dynamic and fun. What a one-two punch at the end of that lineup with Jocelyn Moore and Amari Celestine for Missouri. Difficult E pass here. Full twisting double back. Nice technique, good control. And strong finish. Beautiful technique on that round up back handspring to set up the double back. And this is just pure joy. We know Mizzou has been having a historic season and Shannon Wilker said a big reason of their success this year has been their mindset of having process goals and outcome goals. The process goal has been having an aggressive mindset and I don't know who describes that better than Amari Celestine's floor team. The Mizzou gymnast told me that she is the life of the party, the star of the show. So hopefully you guys got a glimpse of them dancing on the sidelines. It was fun. And of course the outcome goals are to win this session and they did a terrific job in that rotation. A 9925 for Amari Sellison moves Missouri into first place over Arkansas here at the third rotation. So Arkansas had been leading after one and two. Missouri with that one-two punch of Moore and Celestine moves into first. Maggie O'Hara was outstanding for Arkansas on the bars with a 985. Just picture perfect form throughout. And Jocelyn Moore, what a fight to hold on to these landings. You can see why this team is ranked 10th in the nation on floor exercise. All right, let's go down to Sam. She's with Kentucky coach Tim Garrison. Yeah, thanks, Bart. You had a mistake on being a fall. What was going through your mind after watching that? Same thing that goes through my mind every time I see a mistake on beam. Let's get the next few in a row. That way we don't have to worry about counting a, uh, counting a major mistake. So, but you know what, I'll tell you what, the fight in this group was something. I saw we just got together in a huddle and we talked about it. The fight, there were some covers in those beam routines where they had to make some smart decisions to get all the bonus that they needed, and they did that. So their brains are on. Physically, we're just, we're just a little bit off right now. We're just not as sharp as we typically are. But that happens at championships meet sometimes. We're going to go finish it up strong right here on floor. What do they need to do to adjust on this floor rotation? You know, we just get back to being themselves. Right now, I feel like they're tight, you know, and they, we started off on, on vault, I thought was pretty strong, a little bit off on bars, carried it over to beam, and again, we made some strong covers, but we had to make those covers. Um, we're just not settled in at this point, so hopefully we can get over the floor, and uh, that's where you can really let it go. You know, there's no control involved over there, uh, so that's what we're hoping to do. Thanks, Tim. You bet. All right, after the third rotation, Missouri has taken the lead by one-tenth of a point over Arkansas. Kentucky has been in third all day as Georgia has been in fourth. A lot of exciting gymnastics yet to come here from the SEC Championship. Welcome back to the SEC Gymnastics Championship. We're getting set for the fourth and final rotation. Missouri has moved into the lead by one-tenth of a point over Arkansas, followed by Kentucky and Georgia. Missouri's best finish is sixth in the SEC Championship. They have a chance to win it all. Arkansas, their best finish is fourth. But the most titles goes to Georgia. 16 titles over the years. I believe their last one was about 2008. Florida has had 10, Alabama 10, including last year. LSU has had four titles, including the first one in 1981, and then three straight through to 2019. Courtney Kupetz-Carter, the head coach at Georgia, was part of 
four of the Gym Dogs SEC Championships, 16 of them as a collegiate gymnast. She also led Georgia to four NCAA team titles and won a record nine NCAA individual titles. Now, prior to college, she had a remarkable elite career in the early 2000s, culminating with two medals in the 2004 Athens Olympics. She also won a bars gold medal at the 2002 World Championships, and she was a two-time U.S. all-around champion, now the head coach for the Georgia Gym Dogs. And Arkansas head coach Jordan Weber was also an Olympian as a member of the gold medal winning Fierce Five in 2012. She won the 2011 World All-Around title and two U.S. All-Around titles before going on to be a student coach at UCLA and the Razorbacks head coach in 2019. The staff she has brought to Arkansas also brings a treasure trove of Olympic and world's experience, including Olympians Chris Brooks and Kyla Ross and former U.S. national team member Felicia Hano. I love this. Hey, if there's ever contest about which team has the most coaches with the most medals, <laughs> Arkansas wins hands, hands down. down. Well, that's the SEC trophy that will be awarded tonight after the evening session. A great day of SEC gymnastics. The best of the best on set in the SEC. Here's the summary of this meet so far after three of four rotations. Arkansas led at the halfway point, but Missouri took over the lead with that incredible rotation on floor, capped off with a 9-9-2 by Amari Celestine. Remember, it's a quad box. You can watch every single routine on the SEC network, plus each apparatus has its own individual channel, plus you can watch the all-around channel with every apparatus going at once. In this fourth and final rotation, on the vault, we have Missouri on the bars, Georgia on the beam, Arkansas, and Kentucky's on the floor. Amaya Marshall on vault, well done. Good start, open with the Yurchenko full. Galicks to DeMaio. Arkansas on beam. Arkansas and Missouri separated by just one tenth of a point. Arkansas is ranked 15th in the nation on this event. The coach for beam is Kyla Ross, and there are very few coaches who can share the experience of how to be calm and aggressive on this event. It's the event that requires the most supreme focus and the rare combination of being both calm and aggressive from start to finish. This is Arkansas's highest ranked event this year, currently 15th in the NCAA. Finishes strong, one and a half twist. Back to ball bar for Missouri. Holland Patrick set to go after Amaya Marsha. Marshall let them off with a 9.75. Another year, Chenko full here. They're looking for stuck landing. She oh came on my. too high. Mm. I was afraid. When you come on that table too high, you cannot get the block for the height or the rotation. You need to make that ball. So that will be the score they want to drop. She's only been in the vault lineup one other time this season. Just came, up, came on really high so that her after flight of the vault goes down instead of up. Normally she contributes a great deal on bars, rarely in the vault lineup, that was unlucky. Leah Smith will be next up to go for Arkansas on beam. Abby Ward, 9725 for Georgia on the bars. Talk about Kyla Ross's contributions to this team. Kyla herself, the only gymnast to win an NCAA World and Olympic gold medal. She did it, US team, and of course when she was with US, 
UCLA. On floor, Ariana Patterson. After Jillian Pukaski led them off on the ninth set. Look at the amplitude on her tumbling. Rather large step out of the pass. Saw the score in for Missouri's Holland Patrick. Only a 9-0-5. So Missouri has had one fall. Remember, they have the lead by a tenth over Arkansas. They can afford no more mistakes on vault. So as Leah Smith waits to mount the balance beam, what you saw Kyla Ross and Leah Smith going through is the mental choreography that is necessary for me. Went through the routine, just a reminding yourself of your strong mental cues because that's what you fall back on. Anytime nerves creep in, focus on the cues. Gonna pull her away from the beam. Kyla's coming over. Maybe a reset right here. She's got it. And a few times today where the judges on beam were either out of range or did not agree on the start values. Final pass, strong finish for Patterson on floor. Straddle court a little bit short on both of those. That's nerves. She's a little tight. Oh, a big hop, unfortunately, on that pull. That's going to be a big deduction. And then a leg raise over here on balance beam. It's Sienna Schreiber for Missouri. Grace Ann Davis before her a 9775. Consistently, the scores on Walt have been tighter than the other events, it seems, today. Big dismount here. It's a rather long pause. They may deduct. And it's a double back. Slightly short on rotation, so the step forward. Glad to see her go for that big difficulty. But that was kind of a tight, nervous routine. Once again, the one-two punch set to go now for Missouri. Sienna Schreiber, a 9-8-2-5. Here comes Amari Celestine. She'll be followed by Jocelyn Moore. Remember, this Missouri is, has a fall already. This is a one and a half. Advantage here if she can stick oh, it. Nice. That's a big ball. Really, really beautifully done. <laughs> <laughs> so nice, nice block up. Almost five feet, about four and a half feet off the table, but check out. The distance, nine feet away from the table. That is impressive. Little, little knee bend on the landing and a crossover step, whether the judges can really see the crossover step, but they can certainly see the step forward. So Missouri will finish up vault with Jocelyn Moore, and then that will be the score to beat because vault finishes quicker than the other events. And so Arkansas will know exactly what they need if they hold to overtake them in this fourth and final rotation. This Kentucky can be, and Georgia trail significant. This can be a very big vault. She's ranked eighth in the country. If she can stick the landing, Whoa. that is a huge that vault. Was big. And she held on. You could see those feet wanting to lift up. And she said, no. Put him right back down. Her teammate Amari Celestine had a 9.85 before her. There's been no score of 9.9 on vault today. Look at this how high she is. This height is fantastic. Almost five and a half feet above the table, eight feet distance. So that's a great combination of height and distance. That is the definition of amplitude. And just kind of a <laughs> slide into that salute, ever so slight. Wow. Uh, the Missouri Tigers have had a good day. Wherever they finish, they've done a nice job. They're very excited. 
as we go back to beam for Arkansas, Kiara Gianfania after Leah Smith had only a 9-5. So Arkansas has had their one subpar score, so they need four hit routines, including one here from Gianfania. to the front toss. Jocelyn Moore's score came in for Missouri a 9.95. The highest score of the day on ball. And dismount, down of one nice. and a half to a stuck landing. That's a good reset. So the issues in the previous routines, very, very nervous routine for the first two performances and, and an issue with the start value. So they missed some connections or didn't add, like you have to think on your feet on beam. If you've missed something, you have to have a backup so that you don't have an issue with that start value score. Anna Higgis now for Kentucky on floor after Isabella Magnelli had their team high score over there, 985. This is always an entertaining routine for Kentucky. Nice flexibility on those leaps, full split. Double back, excellent control, no movement of that front foot as she went into the lunge. Really good routine, nicely done. Higgis, the senior from Ohio, walked on and has made significant contributions to this team. Remember last year, they were proud to say that Kentucky was walk on you, and Tim Garrison has done a nice job at incorporating scholarship to non-scholarship athletes and creating a terrific team. So they unfortunately were just a little bit off today, couldn't quite get on track, and so they are now trailing. It looks like it's gonna come down to Missouri and Arkansas. Missouri's score of a 196.875 is their highest score in SEC championship history as Bailey Lovett takes to the beam, coming after Gianfania had a 9.825. Her acro series is right here, front aerial, right into the back handspring, has to keep moving, or back layout, step out, oh, big break. And I'm not sure if they want to be strict, they may not give her that connection because there was a pause, hesitation. It's a difficult combination, however. But the big break was the bend at the hips. That's as large a balance break deduction as you can get. Well, she got this routine back on track, came up big with a stuck landing, but that break in the middle of the routine with the acro combination. So this front aerial needs to keep moving. She did keep the arms moving, so she'll probably, probably get credit for that, but that break in the hips is at least a three-tenths deduction when you break that far. Coming up next, it's the second game of a big three-game softball series between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Coverage begins at 5.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Final bar routine today for Georgia. 9.825 was the score for Megan Roberts. They've had a fall. Lee Hadaway scored only an 8.9. So they need a hit here. It seems like Georgia has put themselves in a hole in every event today with one fall and putting extra pressure on the rest of the lineup. Let's see what Victoria Wynn can do as their anchor performer. Well, this can be a good finish for them on this event. It's a pretty routine with a unique element in the beginning. After this toe on, she does a half turn 
after this one. Half turn Higgins roll into a Pike Jaeger. That's Very nice. difficult combination. Yeah, that's great. Pack Salto down. She's got a little bit of form with the feet not quite maintaining that complete toe point and locked legs. But love the difficulty in this routine and the double layout. Yes. Great landing. Outstanding. She's going to be happy with that. And nice way to finish for Georgia. Kennedy Hambrick on beam after Bailey Lovett scored a 9 6 5. Okay, that extra step back is going to be a slight deduction. She didn't lose her balance, but she didn't show control right out of the layout step back. Only one score for Arkansas today over 9-7, and that's Giampagna's 9-8-2-5 on beam so far. We jump into a straddle three-quarter. More difficult than some of the jumps we've seen. Hartwell into the gainer full. Nice height. Few little things in there to deduct for, but a hit routine. Haley Davis for Kentucky on floor, a 9-9. Nine, nine. Anna Higgis before her, 9-8-7-5. The anchor performer, Raina Worley, the all-arounder. Currently ranked third in the country in the all-around. She will be the last competitor for the Wildcats here on floor. You see her season average, currently ranked seventh in the country on this event as well. And I'm a fan of this big, epic music choice. Strong opening, full twisting double back, nice. and look at the control. That's good. That is a deduction free landing. Nice job pushing all the way through the feet into those leads. She points those toes right off the floor. Full to a really well done front layout. Nice and floaty and a perfect landing. Double high, look for the straight legs, pointed toes. Double tuck, rather. A little scoot back, but she sold it. <laughs> she got those arms up. So she could have distracted the judges from seeing the feet slide. <laughs> Especially because where they sit, they're level with the floor. Final beam competitor now for Arkansas. Kennedy Hambrick in with a 9-8. Missouri already with a 196-875. Have they put themselves out of reach? That handspring layout step out here. Look for good form. Nice straight legs. Very solid. Split jump to split three quarter. Difficult jump. Very solid on the front aerial. She needs a little bit stronger toe point throughout this routine. But no doubt, this is as oh, nice. solid as can be. Well done. Solid effort today for the Razorbacks. They went winless in the SEC regular season, but solid today here at the championship, Kathy. I really like how calm she stayed, very deliberate on every single skill, stayed in the moment, so important on balance beam.
Jordan Weber in her third season. At just 26 years of age, she herself a world champion, Olympic gold medalist. Making great progress with her Razorback team. Missouri waits to see if they have had enough. If that score of 196, 8, 7, 5, and they have won it. They won session number one. Remember, session number two comes this evening at 7 Central, 8 Eastern with the four top teams in the SEC. But so far, Missouri, the leader in the clubhouse with their best finish ever at the SEC Championship. 8 Eastern, a champion will be crowned in the second session of the SEC Gymnastics Championship with Florida, LSU, Auburn, and Alabama all competing on the floor at the same time. Right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. And the final score here in session one of the SEC Championship, Missouri continues that outstanding momentum they've had all here with a 9 196.875, and they get the win of session one. And Sam is with their head coach, Shannon Welker. Shannon, you told me one of the goals coming into this competition was to win session one. You were able to get that done. How? Yeah, it was great. Well, you know, I, we weren't we were not perfect today. We had a couple of mistakes, but I thought we were just steady, and we didn't let those small mistakes impact the next routine up. And you know, I was really proud of them. They stayed focused. They just stayed stayed on task and, and we got it done and I was really you know it's exciting to see them have the success because I know they've worked really hard for this. Your highest SEC finish up until this point has been sixth place. You surpassed that already being in fourth place could be higher depending on the scores later today. What does this mean for your program? Yeah it's good you know I've been telling them I think it just reinforces the messages that we're trying to to, to make help them believe and when they can put the performance with it it's really exciting, and I'm, I'm excited to see what we can do the rest of the postseason. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Sam. A lot of highlights in this session. Number one, a lot of them provided by Arkansas and Missouri in particular, the two teams that had the cleanest performance today so far. And that's what it was going to take because in an environment like this, it's so fast-paced. It can be distracting. A lot of nerves, a lot of pressure, and seeing them handle it and come up big in these moments with stuck landings. So exciting. Arkansas led after the halfway point, but it was Missouri that took over in rotation three. They attacked balance beam. That was the key to the success. So many teams struggled on beam. And then put on a show, fought for every tenth of a point, but had fun in the process. That's what NCAA gymnastics is all about. Fun and focus, stay in, their, stay in your team bubble, get the job done. And Missouri did it big time in this first session. They now have a score to beat. Shannon Welker says we have a process goal, that's to be aggressive, they surely were, and an outcome goal, that's to win their session, and that's exactly what they did. Let's go back down to Sam. Thanks, Bart. Sienna, you had a lot of pressure. Following a fall on beam, you had to hit that routine, and actually, you got a 9.95 and have the highest beam score of this session. What helped you do that? You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. No, I just tried to focus in on what I can do and like my details and know, like, it's not that serious, let's have fun, my motto, but you know, like I can do what I can do for the team and just get out there and do what I've been doing in practice every day. So it was just kind of reverting back to what I know. I know a big theme of your team is being aggressive, practice and in competition. Which of your teammates were most aggressive here today? I think definitely Jossie on floor and vault. Amari did awesome on floor, she stayed aggressive. Hannah's beam has been looking awesome. She's been finishing everything so great. She's been really working on that. So they did a really good job on that today. Thanks, Sienna. Thank you. All right, congratulations to Sienna and to the Missouri Tigers. They get the win in session one here. We'll be back in a few minutes for the final wrap up here from session one of the SEC Championship. ESPN has you covered for the entire NCAA Gymnastics Championship on Thursday, April 14th. The top eight teams in the country will compete in the semifinals number one and then at 6 Eastern on ESPN2. The top two teams in each semi will advance to the championship on Saturday, April 16th. 
That's at 1 Eastern on ABC. We'll also have the apparatus-specific coverage and the all-around channel on the ESPN app for all three sessions. Two sessions on the 14th at 1 p.m. and 6 p.m., and the championship final at 1 p.m. on the 16th, and that's on ABC. Hi, everybody. I'm Bart Connor, along with Kathy Johnson-Clark, and Sam Peshik's down there. It was a heck of a meet, right? You know, we come into this thing, there's a lot of pressure, but it always seems to come down to who can hold together the nerves on beam, and that was the story today. I'm going to write my own version of the if poem for beam. If you can keep your head and focus <laughs> when all around you is going crazy and there's a lot of pressure, that may pay off, and it did. It's, it's a hard event to do, but wow. It, it did come down to beam. <laughs> Let's look ahead to tonight's session at 8 Eastern. We have the top four teams in the conference going, and at the end of tonight, we'll crown an SEC champion. Missouri did a great job this afternoon, but the big guns are coming later. It's going to be just a dash for the trophy. It's going to be Florida, crazy. Florida, LSU, Auburn, and Alabama. Those teams are all ranked in the top six in the country. That's how good this conference is. It's, it's going to be crazy good. All I can say is... Put your seatbelts on <laughs> and don't miss it. Now, Florida went undefeated in the regular season, and therefore they were awarded the regular season SEC championship trophy. Going undefeated this year, and they, of course, will compete in the SEC championship for the title. They had a tie with Auburn two weeks ago in a thriller, 198-575. Auburn having the best season in their program history, and what a night it was, Kathy. There were so many spectacular routines and fighting for every single tenth of a point. When it comes down to the final routine, and you need a 10, <laughs> and you come up with it, wow. They tied, and yet that still meant that Florida retained the SEC season championship, the regular season. It was an amazing meet, four perfect 10s in that competition. Now, last year at this SEC championship, it came down to Alabama in the final rotation, and it was all on the shoulders of Luisa Blanco, who had just a lights-out performance here. Lights Out describes it from a perfectly stuck one-and-a-half twist, spectacular, high-flying, perfection on uneven bars, and just pristine on balance beam, nerves of steel to stick this double twist and then a magical, flawless finish on floor exercise. She was able to celebrate a four-event competition that was a dream come true for her and her Bama teammates. They were ranked only third coming into the championship last year, and they won it all. Okay, those are the scores after session one. As you can see, Missouri essentially the leader in the clubhouse with 196.875. Coming up at 8 Eastern, it's Florida, LSU, Auburn, and Alabama. They have to beat that 196.875 to win the championship, which will be awarded at the end of the evening. So a great day of gymnastics here from Birmingham for Sam Peshik and Kathy Johnson-Clark. I'm Bar Connor. Session one is in the books, and the big guns come up at 8 p.m. Eastern with Florida, LSU, Auburn, and Alabama. Four of the top six teams in the country going head-to-head -head at the same time. Who will win it? We'll find out tonight.